Hello and welcome to Devil's Advocate. Now that the new government has taken office, how does it view the state of the Indian economy and what steps does it plan to take to restore growth? Those are the two key issues I shall discuss today with the Deputy Chairman of the Planning Commission, Montek Singh Aluwalia. Dr. Aluwalia, let's start with the state of the economy. On the one hand, performance in quarter four was better than anticipated and the economy itself over the last year has grown at 6.7 percent but on the other hand exports have fallen steadily for seven months in a row manufacturing has dipped into negative figures and perhaps as many as 15 lakh jobs have been lost so what's your considered view of the state of the economy well it's clearly going through a difficult time I mean the most important thing is that this is conceivably the worst year that the world economy has had for the last 60 years or so. If you take account of that, then given the external circumstances, the economy has done well, and I think its inherent strength is very good. Uh, it will be able, with the right set of policy incentives and stimulus, it will be able to recover very quickly to high growth. I want very much to talk about the right steps and stimulus, but first let me put this to you. How much heart do you take from the better performance in quarter four? And the reason I ask is because the business standard has pointed out that more than half of that GDP growth in quarter four was because government consumption, as they call it, increased by 22%. So how much of an indication of return to health is that? I wouldn't rely entirely on the quarter, the fourth quarter numbers. I mean, I think, let's face it, the third and fourth quarter together did indicate a significantly slower growth than the kind of trend that we're trying to aim at. Uh, but the real issue is that in the current year, and not in the first quarter of the current fiscal year, but maybe in the second half, I think there's a very good chance that you will see the economy rebound. And the main point is the fiscal stimulus measures that were taken probably after December in effect, they take some time to have an effect. So most of the stimulus that the government introduced in the previous fiscal year, the impact of that on production is likely to be felt in the current year. All right, I take your point that the impact of the stimulus is still to be fully felt, but in the meantime, manufacturing in quarter four dipped into negative figures and even if you look at the full year it was down to just 2.4 percent growth compared to 8.2 the year before how concerned are you about the state of Indian manufacturing I think everyone in government is concerned about the state of Indian manufacturing I mean let's face it that the external uh, adverse developments a on exports and B, the slowing down of investment, both of these things would have an impact. Discussions have to take place with the finance ministry. We don't have the full information. The interesting thing is that you suggest that there is a debate or at least an internal discussion going on about the fiscal stimulus and the level of fiscal deficit that's acceptable given that India's debt to GDP ratio is somewhere around 81, 82, 83 percent. What level of fiscal deficit do you think you can consider in these circumstances acceptable? You see, I wouldn't focus on the fiscal deficit in the current year. I, I think making a fetish of the fiscal deficit in one year doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, the United States has a fiscal deficit of 11%. Uh, UK has about 10%. What we need, it's true that the debt to GDP ratio is high. We should make up our mind, what do we want it to be five years from now? And what's the kind of fiscal deficit we need today? And can we bring it down over the next five years sufficiently to reach a target debt to GDP ratio? From a personal standpoint, answer your own questions. What would you like the debt to GDP ratio to be five years from now? And what then, in calculation with that, should the fiscal deficit be? Well, that's exactly what we're actually doing in the Planning Commission right now. And I'm not in a position to actually uh, share numbers. But you know, I would say that a very substantial reduction in the ratio uh, of the deficit, five to six percentage points of GDP lower, maybe more, over a five-year period would be a very desirable thing. So you'd like to bring the debt to GDP ratio down to somewhere around 75, 76 percent? Yeah, but you know, more importantly, it's the trend that counts. I think if people sense that the fiscal, the debt to GDP ratio is going down, and that the fiscal deficit is going down, I think the concern about fiscal prudence will be met. So some of it is not just actual numbers, but perception and performance. Well, it's actual numbers of change rather than actual numbers of a current year. Absolutely. And that in turn affects perception and yes. gives confidence. Absolutely. And that's the most important thing. As long as the perception and the confidence is there, the absolute numbers don't really matter so much per se. Yes, they matter less if, I mean, let's put it very simply, 
if you had a fiscal deficit of say 7% in the current year, objectively that's high. But if you can set it in a set of policies which lets people know it'll be 5% and then 4% and then 3%, I don't think people care too much. Provided you stick to the five, four, and three. Yes, the credibility of that transition needs very hard-headed look. And I mean, investors abroad will be looking exactly at that. Let me say that these concerns about the fiscal deficit, not just for India. You know, Standard & Poor's have downgraded the United Kingdom on the grounds that they feel their debt. So we, if we also have a debt problem, but we are by no means the only country having a debt problem. But you're also keeping an eye open on how investors abroad are looking at your debt I problem. think that's very important, and we are. All right, let's come to some of the measures that were enunciated, or at least hinted at, in the President's address to the Lok Sabha the other day. To begin with, the government seems to have put a lot of stress on disinvestment. Let me first ask you, is this intended to tackle the fiscal deficit, or is it primarily intended to send a signal of reform as well as to reinvigorate the PSUs infected. Which is it? Well, I think all of these will happen. And I, I wouldn't say, by the way, that the President's address has put a lot of emphasis. I mean, if you look at the amount of How about of my time, saying that the reporting of the President's address has put emphasis yes, on it? Yes, I, I think that's done. absolutely true. I mean, uh, the financial sort of analysts have a few things that they regard as signals of reform. Disinvestment is a and prime I, one. I have no doubt that disinvestment is one of those. But you know, we, we should be trying to do what is right. I believe the disinvestment we are planning to do is right. But you know, there are many, many other things in the President's address, mm. I'll and come they're very important. I'll come to those in a moment's time, but let's stick with disinvestment for a moment. How extensive is the disinvestment that the government is envisaging? In other words, are you thinking of just three or four token companies, and that's it? Or are you actually planning disinvestment across a range, maybe even a plethora of companies? Well, there isn't an actual government decision on this, as you can imagine. Since the government has just come in, the president's address is only two days old. But I'm sure that the Ministry of Finance and the Department of Disinvestment are actually looking at what's feasible. Now, in my view, uh, assuming that disinvestment is going to be done, which is clearly the case, it's more important to determine, uh, lay down a clear program for the next three years, not be worried so much about how much disinvestment are you going to do this year. It doesn't matter, I mean, you've got to do disinvestment at the right time, it takes a certain amount of time to get things going. The signal we should be giving is, are we willing to do a significant amount of disinvestment over a three to four year period? Now the only limit, in my view, is that uh, government equity cannot go below 51%. I mean, other than that, you can disinvest all the way. The very clear signals you're sending, you personally believe that there should be a program, a program that shows extensive disinvestment over a period of three, four years, and the real limit is that government equity mustn't fall below 51%. That's, the, that's what being public sector means. I think there are, there, there, there are some qualifications here. You know, sometimes companies want to raise money from the public directly. And if they do that, that lowers government equity. So as long as you have a target of 51%, for companies where you want to raise money into the company, you need to keep in mind the scope for that while planning your Absolutely. business. Absolutely. Otherwise, there's no but, but there is a roadmap stretching beyond three or four years that will be made clear by the government. And so it will be quite clear and transparent what the government intends and how extensive. I would hope that that is what will come out of the current deliberations, yes. Let's take a break at that point. I want to come back and talk to you about other messages that were sent out in the President's address and ask you precisely how far you intend to go and then perhaps raise one or two difficult things that industrialists are keen on and ask whether they're at all feasible or whether those fall into what I would call the no-no category. That's in a moment's time. See you after the break. Welcome back to Devil's Advocate with the Deputy Chairman of the Planning Commission, Montek Singh Aluwalia. Dr. Aluwalia, in part one, we spent a lot of time on disinvestment because it's a subject that the press has focused on. Let's now come to other matters referred to or hinted at in the President's address. First, are the hints given about pension, banking, and raising <coughs> insurance caps. Now, as you know, these are things the government has talked about before. In fact, insurance caps are something that the government committed itself to in its first budget but didn't deliver. Are you aware that this time around, people are looking to see whether you're going to actually deliver, or whether these are once again promises that you will resile from. Well, I think the President's address lays out a very clear agenda, and the government very serious in implementing that agenda. 
That does include the steps you mentioned. I hope that it will be possible to do that. It does depend on parliamentary support. I mean, for example, the proposal to raise the foreign equity limit in insurance from 26% to 49% makes a lot of sense to me, but it does require an amendment to the Act. But you have 324 MPs in the Lok Sabha, so why are you worried about parliamentary support? Oh, I don't, no, no, but you need to get it through both houses. I'm not saying we're worried. I'm just saying we, sh we will certainly, I hope, make the effort and if there is parliamentary support, it should get done. Let me put it like this. Analjeet Singh, the chairman of Max New York Life, one of the larger, more credible private sector insurance companies, has said that in the eyes of the outside world, delivery on insurance caps is a credibility test for the government. Well, I'm aware that in certain circles, uh, particularly amongst financial analysts, that tends to be the case. But I would like to say that while that is, in, I mean, this is not something we are doing because they worry about. This is something we think makes sense. But what does worry me about me is that they focus on only two or three things. Our agenda is actually very wide. I'll come to the rest of the agenda, but you're giving me an assurance, aren't you, that you believe this will go through and that you are genuine about it. These are not just commitments made. Oh, we're the certainly thing. genuine about it. There's no question about that. Let's come to something else. The president's address also hinted at, and I won't put it more strongly than that, on targeting subsidies better so that they reach the needy. Are you actually envisaging cutting back on them? That's an issue that has been on the agenda for a long time. I mean, I think we, I'm not aware that we have at the moment specific proposals uh, in that regard. But I think clearly one of the ideas there is that the Food Security Act, for example, which offers uh, promises to provide very low price food has to be targeted. It's meant for the BPL population. So I think the reference there is that we need to find ways of making sure that these desirable subsidies actually get to the target group and that we don't set up mechanisms where you have low price items with huge leakages which just mean a lot of costs without much benefit. What about in this regard considering deregulation of petrol, diesel and cooking gas? I know that the minister has spoken about it to the press, but it's not really a part of the president's address, given that the oil price is already inching above 67, 68, and it could be hitting 70. You have a fairly small window of opportunity to deregulate the price before the price itself goes so high that it becomes a frighteningly difficult thing to do. No, no, there's no question that uh, the price reform that the petroleum minister has spoken about is a very important part of agenda. I mean, in the previous government, uh, we had approved uh, the integrated energy policy. Now one of the key elements of that integrated energy policy is linking petroleum product prices to international prices. I mean anything else quite frankly is not economically sustainable. Uh, we have a window where it's true that price, oil prices are going up. It's unlikely that for the year as a whole given that we don't expect in the global economy to see a very strong economic recovery, it's unlikely that oil prices will get too much out of line. But is this, so this would be a good time to bring about that rationalization. This but is I think it's something that the minister has already spoken about. I've not seen detailed proposals that they're working on yet. But I want to underline what you said. This is a good time to bring it about. I would say yes. Uh, I mean, if, if we accept the proposition that they're to be linked, uh, it, the thing to do is to do it at a time when you don't expect to see too much volatility in the oil market, and I don't think there will be. Let's come to infrastructure. I know that you believe that the single biggest bottleneck to India's growth and development is the poor state of India's infrastructure. And certainly governments, not just yours, but previous governments, have spent a lot of time talking and making promises, but the delivery and the implementation is very weak. This time around, what guarantee can you give that when it comes to infrastructure, delivery and execution will match up to promise? Well, I think the main uh, reason why I'm optimistic is that, you know, in the last three years or so, we spent a lot of energy in getting the process issues right. And I think we've made progress in that. Whether you look at roads or you look at power, I think all the process issues have got resolved. We know how to do it. There's interministerial agreement, and quite frankly, the pipeline is very strong. So I think that in the coming year, uh, you will see a very significant improvement in the pace of implementation of these kind of ports, roads, power plants, all of them. Let me put to you a 
proposition that CII has tabled, and you've probably been formally delivered this by CII as well. They've suggested a single window agency for clearance of fully researched, designed proposals, which have the clearances with them, which are then auctioned to the highest bidder. Does that make sense to you? I think it does, actually. I mean, uh, you know, when you say a single window, it's not really a single window clearance. What they're saying is that, for example, if you want to, if you want to build a power plant or you want to build a road uh, with public-private partnership in some manner, so you're bringing in a private entrepreneur through competitive bidding. What they're saying really is set up a shell company which remains with the public sector, go through the process of getting all these clearances, and when the clearances have been obtained for the project that you have in mind, bid out the company. I think it can be done. But remember, what this means really is that all the time that will be taken will be taken, so to speak, on the government's watch. When you bring in the private sector, you'll have the clearances. Uh, it's a separate issue to make sure that the clearances themselves are done very quickly. Absolutely. And I think that that's equally important. But that's the real test, because the government's credibility depends upon, A, ensuring that the clearances are done quickly, comprehensively, and then delivered easily and effectively. Can the government do its bit? I think we can do better than we've done in the past. And, I, and my personal view is we should certainly experiment with this type of approach for the one very simple reason. When you're pushing to get a clearance for what is at present a public sector company, and the private sector person who will ultimately own the company is not known, it's much easier to push for the clearance because of the importance of the project. Once you've got a project that's been bid out, then you're pushing for an individual company, and that becomes much more difficult. One last quick question, and give me a quick answer. Monte Carlo Walia is in favor of this. I'm sure the Prime Minister is in favor of it. Will the Babus help you, or will they be an obstacle? I think we exaggerate the extent of uh, obstacle put in by officials. I think if the government is very clear that this is one, what we want to do, it is perfectly possible to get the administration to be supportive. Yes, uh, objections may be raised. They have to be addressed and a clear decision taken. All right, Monte Carlo, let's hope you're right. You've held out a lot of promise. You've probably cheered many hearts. Now you have to deliver. A pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Pleasure.